Hi guys and welcome to this webinar. Um, how are you doing? Uh, let us know in the comments. We're going to try and make this as interactive as possible. So we're going to be asking questions. We're going to be trying to get your feedback all the way through. And in that vein, um, how many of you are here to improve your grades? And just drop us a line in the comments. And how many of you struggle to be time efficient, not just when you're revising, but also in exams, because that's a really big deal as well. And how many of you just want to burn your textbook and just try to maybe find some way of enjoying learning because you absolutely hate it right now? Been there, done that. I feel you. And I'm sure a lot of you struggle to stay motivated as well. Let us know in the chat if that's you, if that's what you're looking for out of Snap Revise. And how many of you feel stressed all the time? We know you go through this, like we weren't there so long ago and this is what we just really wanna help you with. Um, and finally, and this is really the big clincher and what's gonna get you your marks and your grades. How many of you struggle to just really properly answer questions and you know the material, you get to the exam, you still get bad mark and you can't quite figure out why. So we're gonna try and tackle all of this within this webinar today. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for coming along and setting aside part of your Sunday. Um, and, you know, we've heard a lot of you are about to sit your GCSEs and, you know, moving into A-levels in September. So it's great that you're here and that you're interested in this because you're really ahead of the curve. So that is, yeah, it's really great. Um, so moving on, we've got a few giveaways um so just before we dive into the actual material itself so we've got free course memberships so it's usually 29.95 per course and we're giving these out to three of you guys um and there will also be for everyone a one time seriously a big discount code for all of you um so in order to enter for the free course memberships the three things you need to do it's really simple just write us a facebook review Follow us on Instagram, um, it's just at Snap Revise, and also stay tuned until the end. And that's when we'll be revealing the winners. So, moving on, uh, we should probably introduce ourselves. Uh, I've totally forgot to do that just now, but I'm Fran. Um, I did natural sciences at uh, Cambridge University. I graduated about well, just over a year now ago. Um, I got straight A stars in biology, chemistry, maths and German at A level and I am the lead seminar presenter. Uh, we also have Danny. Um, she's actually in the room today. She's uh, one of the moderators in the comments so you can chat with her directly as well. She is a biological sciences graduate from Oxford University. Again straight A stars, stellar student in biology, chemistry, maths um, at A level and she's our lead content writer and reviewer and put together um, a lot of the content you're going to be seeing today and a lot of the content that is on our website as well. Adam um, is also around. You'll be very familiar with his face if you uh, do sign up uh, for our courses. He's again uh, a graduate from Oxbridge, uh, Cambridge specifically, biological and biomedical sciences and again got straight A stars in biology, chemistry, maths and geography at A level and he is our lead online course presenter. So um, what do examiners say? So we just kind of want to share a little bit of what we've discovered through our research. So there are some examiners reports and we've sifted through them and there are things that come up time and time again that people just seem to never get right. And that's what we really want to help you with. We want to pinpoint these little bits and just really help you focus in on these common pitfalls. So many students seem to experience difficulties by just missing important details that are both given in questions and also they just fail to um, supply these details in their answers. Um, there were a number of questions where it was obvious that candidates had not read the question properly. This is something that I write on scripts when I still uh, mark them, RTFQ read the full question um, so so important because you can't write the right answer if you're not reading the question 
Um, and the paper is set so that questions cover the specification as widely as possible and test as many skills as possible. Um, and this is quite an interesting one. Um, and it really means that you need to have a really good broad grip of your course, especially so I am um, to biology. Um, especially in biology, because you have so much content, it's quite easy to get sort of bogged down in things. Um, it's really important that you don't miss out bits of the course, even, you know, whilst you try to get all of that detail under your belt. When you're revising, you really need to make sure that you stick to the specification, make sure you don't have any holes in your knowledge. So moving on to the secret of exam technique. So this is a pretty standard question that we've got here. And we've discovered this sort of formula um, that basically means that you can break down every single question into three parts. So firstly, in green up here, we have the context. So this should help you identify the part of the specification that's relevant to the question. So when you get into the exams, the way that I visualize it, it's like I almost have like a Rolodex of facts in my mind, like a load of folders. And I can, the context part of this question helps me to sort of sift through um, all of the facts I've learned and absorbed during my revision and pick out the most important and relevant bits. Um, secondly, we have command words. So um, these are, imperatives that are given to you in your question it'll be like name describe explain we'll go through a lot of these um, in a few slides time um, but these basically tell you what form you need to write your answer in and then we have directions as well so this is the rest of the question that basically tells you specifically exactly what you need to include in your answer so let's put some of this into practice and have a look at how these can like, actually manifest themselves in exams. So there are seven main question types and we'll go through them here very briefly. So we've got statement questions because we, we will, I will explain all of this uh, in due course, just sit tight, uh, but statement questions, uh, these are really, really sort of lower marks, usually one or two marks max. Um, simple explanatory descriptive questions, again, round about two marks. You've got calculation questions, so that's two to three marks. Um, we have explanation and qualitative questions, which are kind of similar to um, these types of explanatory descriptive questions as well, um, but usually worth a couple more marks. And then we have experimental and data analysis questions. These are ones that people will usually find the most tricky um, simply because they usually give you a totally brand new scenario and ask you to apply all of the concepts that you've already learned. So they tend to be slightly higher marks, four marks. Um, and then we have extended responses, which again are quite sim uh, similar to the simple explanatory descriptive questions, but a little bit more broad and they want you to bring in a few more points. So again, we're looking more towards the top end of the mark spectrum here. Um, and people often struggle with this. And this is why I said previously, it's really important to have a broad knowledge as well as learning some of that detail. Make sure you don't have any holes because if you have any holes in your knowledge, this is where you can really fall into some issues um, with the extended responses questions. And then finally, um, for those of you taking AQA especially, you're going to have some essay style questions and these are worth 25 marks. Um, so yeah, again, you really need to have a broad understanding of your course um, and you need to be able to write in a really coherent manner and structure your essays and show that you have uh, a logical flow. So um, we've sifted through a whole bunch of exam papers more than you would care to count and we've tried to work out the mark spreads by question types so we've looked at the uh, seven question types that we explored in the last slide um, so this is for you guys that are taking AQA it looks like about a quarter of your exam will be made up of simple explanatory questions um, and you know, another sort of 21, 22% is made up of explanation questions. So examiners really do want to make sure that you understand what you're learning. You're not just simply regurgitating facts. You're not just able to look at a brand new diagram and 
um, you know, apply uh, some concepts. They also want to make sure that you can fully um, piece together bits of information that you've already learned. Um, there's a little bit of essay stuff, so slightly longer explanatory questions. Um, the next biggest uh, type of question after all of this is data analysis. Uh, and then calculations. And they like data analysis and calculation questions because they really test you because they're giving you brand new information. Um, OCR, this is for you. So again, a lot of explanations here. Um, there's some statement questions as well where you just simply called, uh, ask, sorry, being asked to recall facts. Um, but you can see this big weighting towards explanation. Again, they seem to like calculation data analysis. Um, at Excel, again, you can see that they absolutely love explanation questions. Uh, a little bit of statement calculation data analysis as well. Um, at Excel B as well, um, you can see a very similar type of breakdown. Um, now, moving on, Let's have a look at some statement questions in practice and what it actually means to answer one of these questions and really hit the answer on the nose. So statement questions are really just a test of rote learning, your ability to memorize facts and to recall them in the exam. So questions usually require information that's straight from your specification that can be lifted straight um, out of your textbooks. And they usually do have a little bit of context from which you'll need to extract the subject of the question. So, you know, where exactly are they pointing you in your specification in your textbook? So um, here are some sort of classic command words that you will see. So state naturally will imply that you are looking at statement question, but also define, name, give and you know, which, so when we say which, we mean like which of the following, um, and they might give you a load of stuff to choose from. Sometimes these statement questions take the form of like matching exercises or fill in the blanks. So just be on the lookout for those as well. And sometimes defining the term comes up. They really like that. So make sure that when you are revising, you're not just looking at the sort of main body of your textbook. Do flick to the back as well and have a read through the glossary, maybe even make your own glossary or make some flashcards as well, because that will really ensure that by the time you get around to your exam, you are picking up these marks because they are really easy marks. It, you might think, OK, you know, statement questions, it's only one or two marks per question, but um, those marks add up over time and you can see, especially in, in like the OCR uh, mark breakdown, there's quite a lot that's given to statement questions. So don't underestimate these um, nice, easy marks if you can get them. So here's a nice uh, question. So the effects of light intensity and temperature on the net primary productivity of willow trees was investigated state what is meant by the term net primary productivity. So here we can see that we have the context up first um, and then we have the command um, word which is the state bit and then we have the direction. So we're just being asked to explain net primary productivity. Now um, it's worth memorizing these with standard wording, as I mentioned, it's so important that you have your definitions down and ensure that you are as specific as possible, including all necessary keywords. So don't just, you know, write words like stuff or value or amount. Really, really be specific. Um, so uh, let's pause for a second. Why don't you guys uh, have a go at answering this question? It is only one mark, so hopefully you will only take one minute to answer it. So I'll give you round about that time and uh, stick them in the chat and we'll look through some of them. If any of them are particularly good, I might read them out. Um, and if any of them particularly bad, I'm sure Danny will let you know. So um, yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll leave you to that for a few seconds.
Okay, I think that's about enough time. Um, Shay Shaylee, is that your name? I saw your answer. I think it's really, really good. Um, it's pretty much bang on and sort of shows that some of you, I know I know some of you are doing GCSEs at the moment, but um, Shaylee's absolutely nailed this one. So um, I'm not sure if you're a, a she or a he, but you <laughs> have written the rate at which an ecosystem accumulates energy or biomass, excluding the energy it uses for the process of respiration. That is pretty much like a pitch perfect answer. It's extremely similar to what we have written as our um, model answer. So net primary productivity is the rate at which plants convert light energy into chemical energy stored in biomass. Admittedly, we've gone a, a little bit further into detail, but um, we've added in a given area in a given amount of time, um, which is gross primary productivity minus the energy lost due to respiration. So this is only one mark. Um, you will basically get the mark for saying um, gross primary productivity minus energy lost to respiration. That's really like the key to it. But if you want to really, really secure that mark, you do have to explain what gross primary productivity therefore is. Um, so yeah, it's, yeah, uh, this bit here. So chemical energy stored in biomass in a given area, in a given amount of time. So uh, moving on, simple explanatory or descriptive questions. So these test more of your sort of understanding, your qualitative understanding of biological phenomena. Um, this may require you to recall simple facts and link your own knowledge into specific examples within the question. It may be combined with a statement question. They do like to combine these types of questions. So just be on the lookout for that. Um, I will say, with these kinds of questions, because they are asking you to sometimes regurgitate stuff and to recall these kinds of simple facts, it can be quite tempting to just recall these facts. Um, and often what we find if we just sort of think back, I'm not sure how many of you recall, but when we went, uh, when we were talking through that slide, with examiners comments on it. Um, one of the big comments is that people sometimes just don't read the questions. And even if you're recalling facts that are totally 100% accurate and true and on your specification, if you're not recalling the ones that they're asking for on the question, there's no way you're gonna get the marks. So it's really important, even when you see explain, describe, and you immediately think, oh, I know that, I know that fact. Read through to the end of the question, make sure that that is really the fact that they're asking for. So here are your command words. So naturally explain, is command word for these kinds of questions, describe as well. Suggest is a nice one that you like to slip in there and give reasons. So suggest is quite a tricky one, um, simply because when you see that in an exam, the examiner knows that you've not seen uh, maybe this particular scenario already. So you're not expected to already know all of the ins and outs, but suggest is asking you to recall those facts and link your knowledge to the question. So you really do need to apply yourself. Um, so this is an example of one of these kinds of questions. So explain, so try to give a step-by-step -step logical reasoning to show how or why a biological phenomenon or effect occurs. So here we have this, explain the role of the heart in the formation of tissue fluid. So look carefully at the context and the direction of the question. What do you guys think the context is here? Which part specification are we looking at? Hopefully you'll know even if you are doing GCSEs, this is naturally to do with the heart. Um, and also sort of is trying to link this into the formation of tissue fluid. I mean, it's pretty much there, by, I mean, it's literally there in the question. Um, and it's asking you specifically to link these two things together. So really make sure that you do that in the space provided. Um, provide reasons or causes for the biological phenomena as well. So you do have to dig deep and recall this information and also make sure not to repeat content from the question in your answer. A lot of people are like, well, it's in the question, therefore it must be true. Therefore I'll just write it because you know that might get me a mark. It won't because the examiner has already given you that information. You're not showing the examiner that you've understood anything or that you've learned anything. So um, yeah, this is a really big pitfall I find. 
Um, so I might have just flicked up that question really quickly, but why don't we give you uh, another minute or so to type something in the chat, um, what you think the answer to this question is. And again, like if any of you have really great answers, we will highlight them and talk through them. There are actually loads of great answers here. Too many to pick out. Sean, I'm coming for you. <laughs> uh, you've written, the heart pumps blood into arteries and arterioles, which branch into capillaries where hydrostatic pressure overcomes osmotic pressure and thereby forces tissue fluid out. Um, this is a really great answer. There are ways in which I would improve it. Um, Specifically, I noticed that you haven't quite spelled arteries correctly. So that is something to really look out for. Um, unfortunately, because scientific terms are so specific, it's really important that you get the spelling correct in your answers because sometimes it won't get you the marks. Um, but that was a really great answer, um, especially for two marks. You don't want to be writing too much. So I think the length was perfect. Um, so yeah, well done you. Um, so let's have a look at our model answer. Um, so we've written, the ventricular contraction of the heart results in a high hydrostatic pressure in the blood. This high hydrostatic pressure forces water out of the blood, uh, out of the blood capillaries along with dissolved substances. So this is what we would consider to be a model answer and we've constructed this answer from looking at all of the mark schemes. So a few things to note here. Firstly, um, the ventricular contraction is really important to mention. If you just wrote contraction, you wouldn't get this particular mark. So that is really, really important. So this is what we mean by being so specific with your terms. Don't just, you know, don't just write one word. If you, if there are two words available, um, that would allow you to be a bit more specific, right, both. Um, if you have a little bit of time as well, I generally encourage students to write slightly more rather than slightly less. Still make sure it's relevant and concise, but if you're like, oh, there's an extra word that I could put in here, you might as well stick it in if that means you're gonna secure your mark. Um, secondly, note that you don't need to add too much other information like, the sizes of the capillaries or the sizes of the lumens of these capillaries, that's not relevant. It's only two marks. You don't need to waste any time uh, writing about all this kind of stuff. Um, there's no need to say that the water forced out of this, uh, out of the vessels form tissue fluids because that's already implied within the question. Um, so you don't need to necessarily define tissue fluids because by asking you this question, they assume that you already know what it is. Um, and note how we've sort of constructed this answer as well. So this is a step-by-step -step thing. I tend to encourage students to think about their responses, especially if it's more than a two mark question, as if it's like a bullet point list, like you're kind of writing a recipe for someone or like a to-do list of, you know, ventricular contra uh, contraction does this, it causes uh, high hydrostatic pressure. This then goes on to do this, and this then goes on to do this. So make sure you have some kind of logical flow as well. So moving on, calculation questions. This is usually what people absolutely hate. Um, so 
unfortunately, these do test your quantitative understanding. You do need to be able to manipulate numbers. Um, sometimes they require you to recall the correct formulas as well. So make sure you're able to do that. Um, they may require you to interpret the data set figures and graphs as well to obtain the values yourselves. They might not just give it to you up front. So command words, naturally calculate, um, show your working and determine. Showing your working is so, so important in calculation questions. Um, even if you don't get the answer correct, you can still get marks for your working. So here, um, this is something, sorry, here in this part of the screen, we've taken this from examiners reports as well. So something comes up time and time again is that candidates should, uh, candidates, sorry, should substitute numerical values into an equation before rearranging, as this can show that you've understood what each little bit of the equation actually refers to, even if you then rearrange it wrongly and the final answer is incorrect. So if you didn't show your workings, you wouldn't actually get those initial workings marks. So we've got a calculation question here. I won't get used to it because it's kind of a bit gross. Um, so, and, and you know, uh, I wouldn't want to do that to you on a Sunday. So uh, let's, just read through this. So scientists measured the productivity of two types of forest and recorded the mass of carbon taken up per square meter per year. Um, the table shows the data on the mean net product primary productivity and the mean gross primary productivity of these two types of forest. Calculate a percentage increase in the mass of carbon released due to respiration by temperate deciduous forests com uh, compared with that by boreal forests. So really important key things here include the correct units and um, the correct number of significant figures in your answer if they don't ask for uh, a specific number of significant figures usually three is good um, you can also determine equations from the units used in the question um, so yeah not all information is necessarily required, but sometimes you can just have a look at that and work things out, especially if you get to the exam and you haven't had time to look over this bit of the spec and you get stuck. It's quite a nice way of being able to figure out what you need to do, where you need to go with this calculation. So um, I'm just gonna skip straight to the answer on this one. Um, basically what we have to do is take this number away from this number in each row um, and then work out the difference. So that's, sorry, that's uh, step one here, which is happening here. Step two is happening here. And then we need to find the difference between these, which is what we've done in this line. And then we just need to work out the percentage increase um, so we just take the difference, which is 173, over the number in the boreal forest um, and then multiply that by 100 and that gives us our percentage. So it will be 25.04%. So there you go. Um, yeah, and actually if you were reading this on the exam paper, you would see this percent marker here. So hopefully you would know that uh, you, that's those are the units you need to uh, put your answer in and hopefully you remember to therefore times by 100. So um, that's that. Uh, unfortunately, really the way to get scripts with calculation questions is to practice and practice and practice. Um, hopefully you guys have got textbooks that have um, some like test your own understanding type questions in them. So do take the time out to have a look at those and don't just gloss over them and have a look at the answer and be like, oh, I would have got that anyway, because especially with these kinds of questions, because they're so um, grounded in application, you really, really need to practice these. So um, explanation qualitative questions. Um, so again, I'm not going to spend too long explaining what explain questions are because we've done that already um, a little bit earlier on but just as a quick recap 
Um, these basically test your ability to, to describe more complex processes and hypothesize based on provided information. So um, generally with these longer questions, you just need to include a few more points. So again, you're given quite a lot of information within the context of this question. It really important, I will stress again, do not repeat the um, information that's in the question because you're not gonna get any marks for that and it's just a waste of your time. Here, we're being asked to describe. Um, so you really wanna focus on what is happening or what something does and how it's done. You don't necessarily need to explain why it's done. Um, and then we've got a little bit of direction here. So we're talking about complementary strands of DNA and how those are made. So again, try to think about your question, uh, sorry, rather your answers um, in terms of like a bullet pointed list. And again, this is a bit more of a complex question. So I am just gonna uh, skip straight to the answer. Um, but hopefully you can see how we've laid this out. Complementary base pairs are formed with A to T and G to C. The nucleotides are then joined together with phosphodiester bonds, which is catalyzed by the enzyme DNA polymerase. So um, we have like a basically a step one here, complementary base pairs being formed. And then we have like a step two here. We explain what happens to each nucleotide once the base pairs are formed. And then we've added in a little bit more detail because really key thing in exams to make sure that you are hitting the number of marks that are available for the question. So um, here we've added in the name of the enzyme that catalyzes this process. So you will get definitely three marks for this answer. So um, one of the last kinds of questions that we are going to look at um, are data analysis questions. So these tests your applied and experimental uh, skills in unseen contexts. So uh, they could ask you to analyze and evaluate data and figures that you've never seen before. And um, usually a lot of information is provided within the context of these questions. So again, these can sometimes be hidden in terms of the command words. These could be describe um, type questions. So describe this figure or explain the data that's being provided or summarize the data that's being provided. Um, naturally, we see things like analyze. You will be being asked to analyze certain figures or deduce from a set of facts that you've now been given um, X, Y, Z. So let's have a look. Um, so naturally here, uh, we don't have the data on this slide, it's on the next slide, but I'll just shoot through uh, the bits here. So we don't have the context for this question, but we do definitely have the command words and we've got some really key direction as well. And the reason I say it's key, we'll see on the next slide, um, because often they give you a bit too much data and ask you to extract the relevant information. So that's what's really being covered by this bullet point here really make sure you are pulling out the relevant figures um, and also make sure you give a well-developed line of reasoning and as ever make sure your uh, answer is logically structured and also clearly written. So it's really important also in these questions not just to rely on the data itself that's been given in the exam but also to use your own knowledge and information from the context of the question to back up your reasoning and also naturally anything that you've learned from the spec yourself. So Here's the context. There's a big reason that we didn't put it on the slide before because we couldn't fit it in. Um, so we have this massive graph. Um, I went, there's a lot of text here, but basically um, this bit is key. The key is key, puns. Um, so basically, as we saw on the previous slide, we're being asked about the effects of auxin or IAA. Notice in the graph, you've been given four different curves. And notice in the key that only one of these is actually relevant to the question. So we are really looking at this line and this line only, which is this line here. So um, if you'd answered this question and tried to describe any of these other lines, even if what you wrote was correct, you're naturally never going to get the marks because that's not what you're being asked for. So um, 
we've prepared an answer here again i will skip straight to it because unfortunately this is quite a long question there's a lot of information to process before you can write an answer uh, i think it'd be quite unfair to make you do it in such a short amount of time but um we've written the graph shows that there is no growth of side shoots up to day eight so we've literally just looked at this graph and described the shape of it we've noticed it's straight here and then it peaks up it's really important to quote some figures here as well so we've used um day eight and day 10 and really made sure to put that in our answer so we've said be between day eight and day 10 the growth of side shoots occurs slowly and then grows faster up to day 14 the period of no growth occurs because auxin moves out of the paste and inhibits growth of the shoots after 10 days the auxin is all used up so side shoots start growing again so don't worry too much about the biological context because I know a lot of you probably haven't co covered it just yet. Um, but note the fact that we go, okay, there's no growth here. Nothing's moving on the graph. So we put that in our answer. We take down key figures as well. Um, and, you know, we explain things all the way to the end. We don't leave any part of this curve unexplained. We explain all the way up to day 14. Um, and yeah, um, We've also used a little bit of our synoptic knowledge as well to um, help support our answer. So that's where you're really going to get your three points. Um, note that you're not, like it's very unlikely that you're ever going to get full marks if you don't quote at least one piece of data. So that should just be a rule of thumb when you guys are doing some exam practice. So we're almost there. There's just two types of questions left. So this is the penultimate one, extended answer questions. So these are pretty much like your explain and describe questions, but they will cover much broader topics. So um, these really test your ability to write and structure longer answers. Um, yes, you're gonna get marks for explaining stuff clearly as well, but um, there will always be some additional marks in these kinds of questions for structure and for just how you lay things out because really when you're writing a long piece um, examiners really get into your mind they can see how you think so it's really important that you show them I can think clearly um, I know my stuff I know how things link together so um, yep uh, many students struggled with answers that required extended writing, particularly those involving some reasoning. Um, hopefully that's not going to be the case with you guys because we uh, take you through all of this in our courses and uh, we are running some seminars actually next week where we will go through um, all of this kind of stuff in far more detail. We'll help you structure your answers. Uh, I'm not sure if tickets are still available, but um, they'll be around I, I promise and maybe drop Dan a line who uh, is the founder of Snap Revise who sat next to me and will be jumping in in just a second um, and may, maybe we, we might be able to get some extra bits and bobs for you. So coming straight back to this I got distracted. Um, command words we've got evaluate or discuss, compare, contrast, explain, describe, devise or design but you're probably going to see these extended answer questions and be able to um, uh, identify them because of the number of marks available. So we're looking at a four mark question here. Um, so let's just read through it. The data for calculating metabolic rate are collected using a respirometer. Data res uh, the rate of respiration, sorry, for small mammals can be measured using a continuous flow respirometer. A continuous flow respirometer circulates air through a chamber containing the animal. The rate of airflow can be measured through flow meters in, uh, on the inlet and outlet tubes. Devise a procedure using a continuous flow respirometer to collect the data required to calculate the me metabolic rate of an arctic ground squirrel. Um, so the way to really think about these, um, because you're being asked to devise an experiment here, uh, is to think about the variables. Um, so you might need to draw a diagram uh, here. And uh, you might, it could help to sort of sketch a graph maybe to show the examiner that you know what your data might look like once you've collected it. Um, it's also really important when you're doing practicals in class to really make sure you know the names of the apparatus as well um, so that you can bring them out in questions like this because exams are moving more and more towards um, you know, being more heavily weighted towards these uh, sort of devised type experimental questions. Um, the way to really think about this is through your variables, as I mentioned, so independent and dependent variables. So independent variables are the ones that you change 
uh, deliberately throughout your experiment and the dependent variables are the ones that are going to be measured. Then think practically, like how are you going to measure this stuff? So here we're looking at metabolic rate. That's probably going to be something to do with breathing. Uh, so think about how we're going to measure the various uh, like concentrations of oxygen, carbon dioxide. Imagine you're in a white coat and you're literally in the room trying to do it as well. Don't, you know, um, try and explain or, or make up a piece of apparatus that does something totally mythical uh, because you're not going to get your marks for that. It has to be grounded in science and stuff that you've already learned. So um, also try to explain uh, an understanding of controls as well. Maybe are you going to do any side experiments uh, in slightly different conditions as control experiments? You won't just get a mark for saying, oh, these steps should be repeated because that's not specific enough, um, especially uh, in biology exams. You just need to be so specific when you write anything, explain why you've written it, explain, you know, um, yeah, explain exactly why it's relevant to the question. So link it to specific situations. Um, again, we're going to jump straight to the answer here. And hopefully, uh, I know a lot of you may not have covered this uh, topic just yet, but I'll take you through the structure of it and I will show you where you're going to get your marks. So a solution of potassium hydroxide can uh, or must be used to absorb uh, the carbon dioxide produced by respiration. The volume of air entering and leaving the chamber through the inlet and the outlet tubes has to be measured. Any decrease in the volume of air represents the oxygen taken up by the squirrel for respiration. Environmental variables such as the temperature of the chamber need to be controlled. The measurements need to be taken for a few minutes. The metabolic rate can be calculated by dividing the volume of oxygen used in a unit of time by the measured body mass of the squirrel. Right, there's a lot of stuff there, let's break it down. So solution of potassium hydroxide, note this doesn't necessarily have to be this, you can either use sodium hydroxide or um, soda lime as well. Sorry, my handwriting is terrible. It's much better in the videos, but this is because I'm writing on an upright surface. But um, Yes, so you will get the mark for adding in this little bit of specific biological detail, experimental detail. Um, you're immediately also showing the examiner that you understand carbon dioxide is produced by respiration. This is the little bit of knowledge that you got by digging deep into the stuff that you've learnt and you're applying it to this situation. Um, and then you're showing again in this next sentence, the examiner um, that you understand the sort of the rationale behind the way that you've designed this process. So the volume of air entering and leaving the chamber has to be measured because any decrease in that represents the oxygen that is used by the squirrel. So that's really, really key in, in ensuring that you get full marks. And then finally, we talk about controls as well. So it's nice here that um, you've given some kind of uh, example of a variable that's going to be controlled, um, like temperature. Um, measurements also need to be taken for a few minutes. This shows the examiner that you know you, you can't just do this over the course of one minute because that's not going to give you an accurate reading. You need to do this over you know, a few minutes, maybe even an hour. Um, and then note in the question, you're being asked to uh, suggest how the metabolic rate could be calculated. So make sure that you do put a little bit in here because this will be worth one mark. Um, so you'll get your mark there for that. So that's where you're getting your marks. Uh, hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. Um, note in these kinds of questions though, because you're being asked to come up with something on the spot, there are usually a lot more marks available than you need to like gain full marks on the question. So there might be like on the mark scheme, like eight different things that you could have put down to get those four marks. Finally, for you guys who are lucky enough to be doing AQA, uh, you have to write an essay and these are um, often seen as the most difficult part of um, the exam by a lot of students. Um, so these really test your understanding and application from a holistic perspective. So from really like broad, high level 
um, wide perspective. Um, these should be structures when you write them. Select five or six examples. You're meant to select four as a minimum, uh, with one being from the A-level syllabus. But it's much better to write a little bit more rather than a little bit less. So I would suggest taking five or six examples just in case the examiner looks at one of your four and goes, oh, I'm not sure she's or he's really understood this. So um, write a paragraph about each. Doesn't have to be an essay of its own, but, you know, just something short showing that you understand what it is. Describe it, explain it and link it back. Key, 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 key to link it back to the key theme or idea within the question. Um, you actually don't need to write an introduction or conclusion. You don't get any marks for that. It might be nice to write maybe half a sentence just to ease yourself into the 25 marker and a conclusion to be like, yeah, done it, I finished the exam. Um, but you won't actually get any marks for it, so don't spend too long on it. Please, please, please use specific A-level terminology throughout. You will not get marks, even if you show like a vague understanding of a topic, if you don't use the right kinds of words. So please use the right terms. So here are your command words. Um, evaluate con or contrast. Um, explain, discuss, describe, devise. Kind of similar to before. Again, the real clincher uh, in identifying these questions will be looking at the 25 marks. So... Uh, this is just to kind of show you uh, where you can get marks in these kinds of questions. So um, this was just an essay about the importance of nitrogen containing substances in biological systems. 25 marks available. Look how many topics there are that you've covered in your spec that you could bring into this. Even if you wrote one sentence or two sentences on each, you would easily have enough to write about for 25 marks. So a lot of times people will look at these 25 mark questions and get really, really worried and confused because um, you know, it's, it's scary to start with a blank sheet of paper. In fact, you learn so much of this stuff and the real practice and the real sort of secret to getting really good marks in these exams uh, or in these questions is to practice recalling that information, practice structuring that information. So I would really highly encourage all of you who are doing AQA, sometimes when you're revising, just to start with a blank piece of paper and try and like, uh, try and like dissect the course in different ways. So don't just sit down and go, okay, I'm gonna look at um, DNA replication. Ask yourself, okay, DNA replication, mm, it contains some enzymes, or like in this case, it contains some nitrogen containing substances. Hmm, I wonder where else in this course, nitrogen containing substances crop up and maybe make a mind map. Because at least if you think about these things in that way before you get to the exam, um, once you get to the exam, you're faced with you know a bunch of essay topics that you've never seen before, you're used to that way of thinking and you've practiced that kind of thinking. That's really the key to, exams and revision. It's not just about learning content. Anybody can learn content, but not everybody can recall that content and structure it in the right ways in the exam. So really make sure that you're doing that when you revise. Um, and now I'm gonna hand over to Dan, who um, will talk you through what SNAP Revise is and how it can really, really, really help you. Hi there, guys. Uh, my name is Dan. I'm one of the co-founders here. Thank you very much for joining us this weekend. Um, just first up, just out of interest, we obviously ran a free trial this week. Can I just get a, a just jumping in the chat, the uh, the group chat, who, who used our free trial this week? If I can just get a, a me, uh, that would be great just to see how many people used it. And also, if there's any snap revisers in the group chat, if you could just make yourself known and just, yeah, just, I'd, I'd love to see who, who's on here, who's uh, who's been using snap revise. <laughs> Okay, and the people that use the free trial, can I just get your thoughts on it? What were, what were your thoughts on the A-Level Biology course? Did you like Adam as a presenter? Anyone who's been using our resource so far, what, what did you think about? What, what do you think about it? Do, do you like our videos? Do you like, the, uh, do you like the, the exam question videos? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the chat. Okay, great. We're seeing really good comments about it's really useful, it's concise. What, what, what do we like specifically about it?
Okay, great, amazing. So I just want to spend not very long. I know it's a Sunday, I don't want to keep you too long. We're going to announce the winners very, very soon. So sit tight, about five, six minutes out. So just sit with us till, till we get through there. Um, we're going to be giving away three, uh, three, three memberships to our online biology course. Uh, as well as free seminar tickets. So if you enjoyed Francesca presenting today, we're doing a full full day crash course at Imperial College London this coming weekend. We have very, very few tickets left. So if, if you'd like to jump on um, and, and join us at that, at that crash course, please head to our website and you'll see our seminars link at the top. Um, and you can book your ticket. Um, we'll be presenting a one hour session on exam technique similar to this. And then we're tackling um, using those skills throughout the day in four or five really hard topics, year 12 biology on Saturday and year 13 biology on Sunday. So you'll be able to see Francesca live. We'll have additional tutors like Danny available on the day there to take questions in real time. So it's gonna be a really, really good event just to get, get you guys ready for your, for your finals coming up. Um, so what is Snapprovise? For those of you who don't know, Snapprovise is a smart platform that combines content and technology to motivate and accelerate learning that improves grades. The big thing that we focus on here is that obviously there's lots of videos on YouTube, there's lots of free content out there. We really try, a, we really try on our end to build a platform which A, has obviously excellent content, but we're, we're building technology that actually motivates and accelerates your learning motivates you so that you're not getting procrastinated like going on YouTube and I don't know, watching silly videos and, and accelerates. We, we're, we're, building, we're building a whole tool that is able to do diagnostic testing to work out what you know and what you don't know, which I'll, I'll sort of demo in a sec and can speed up your learning. So you're not, you're not just learning everything you have to. You, know some, you guys know some stuff already. We don't have to go, go through that again. You can definitely consolidate it, but there's probably some weaker spots that you wanna sort of learn and we can, um, we can, we can focus on those. So just like, I guess our core pillars, um, we're peer to peer. Uh, which is really great. You have tutors like Francesca, tutors like Danny, Cambridge, Oxford students, um, very young, very relatable. Uh, you, you guys can, yeah, it's, it's really, really easy to relate to them because they've sort of just been there and done it not too long ago. They're sort of three, four years older than you guys. Um, obviously, they're, they're excellent students having gone to Oxford, Oxford and Cambridge. Um, and they're just subject experts. They've, they've done the, the biology degree at, at those top universities. Um, and, and they're very relatable and young and enthusiastic. And I'm sure you see that in this presentation today. And uh, yeah, you'll see it in the videos as well. Um, our resource is unbelievably comprehensive. And when I mean unbelievably comprehensive, I really mean unbelievably comprehensive. We, um, when we build a course, we literally spend about a year on it. We have five full-time biologists working that one year on it. Our A-level biology course has about, I think, 700 videos, five, 10 minutes, very short. You can see in the top right corner, the exact specification reference, we'll show you in a sec, um, as well as it's, it's super exam focused. So not only are we teaching you um, the content, which yeah, is obviously important. We're, t we're teaching you how to do well in exams. So we have hundreds of exam style question videos populated throughout the throughout the course. So for example, in our carbohydrate sections, there'll be two or three videos on carbohydrates. And then there'll be an exam qu style question video, five or 10 minutes long, going through three or four questions um, and really showing you how to break down the questions, just like you saw today, looking at commands, directions, context, um, and showing you going through yeah, the model answer and where those marks are allocated. So not only is our resource teaching you the content, which is one thing, it's a whole different ball game performing in exams because exams are about testing, testing your knowledge and giving examiners what they want essentially. And that's a whole different skill set, which we include in our, in our course. Um, as I said before, we also are a smart technology. We're, 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 a, we're a company that prides ourselves on building very smart technology to motivate and accelerate learning, which we'll look at in a sec. So let's go through the product real quick. So our biology content videos taught by Oxbridge tutors. Our lead biologist is, is a guy called Adam. He um, studied at Cambridge University as well. Uh, really, really like, yeah, excellent videos that he's done. Uh, the videos have a very clear narrative. We've spent a lot of time internally building and testing and developing a system whereby we can essentially teach you very, very succinctly. We're not all over the place. We have a point image, point image, point image structure where we're building points, point on point on point. So the structure throughout our video has been specifically designed to be unbelievably simple to go through. So we have a point and image, which we then build on as we move down the video. So you're, you're never lost in the video. We're going from point, point, point to point and building on those points. Um, we have a lot of pride in the quality of our videos. Um, you'll see that there's production quality at the start of the video. And it's a very simple, clean screencast of video throughout. Um, as I said, they're bite-sized, they're short, they're five to 10 minutes. Uh, they're super visual and engaging. Uh, we have a lot of annotations throughout the video, really beautiful pictures. We have professional illustrators making. Uh, so the videos are a very, very high standard and, and yet yeah, very, very engaging. And of course, as I said, it's comprehensive. We have 500 plus um, videos, making sure we don't miss a single specification point. Uh, the exam style question videos, we do a full question analysis, just like you've seen Francesca do today. Uh, we look at the commands, the context, the, um, the directions, and we do a full breakdown. Uh, those videos are five, 10 minutes. 
Uh, we look at a model answer. We look at the mark allocations in those answers. And uh, yeah, as, as I said, comprehensive, there's 100 plus per subject. What's included as well um, are notes and summary sheets. So these really, really nice, nicely designed summary sheets you can see here on the left. Um, and, and we have a very comprehensive notes revision guide on the right. Um, that'll be a couple hundred pages. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very detailed. It's, 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 concise to some, it's concise but detailed. And we've put a lot of time and effort into actually making it visual and appealing and very nice to look at. So it, it's got a, yeah, a very purpose-built design in it as well. So this is actually not available on the website just yet. It's coming in literally two weeks. We're just putting the final touches on it now. And I'm, I'm looking forward to demoing this with you guys in a sec. We've built these thousands and thousands of self-marking quizzes. So at the end of each of our content videos, our teaching videos, we can go and learn what we've, and, and Collins consolidate what we've learned in the video through multiple choice questions. And they actually link back to the video. So I'll show you that in the demo, which we're quite excited about. But yeah, they're coming in the next two weeks. You won't see that there now, but they are coming out in the next two weeks. Uh, thousands of questions, very clear explanations. So I'm not only giving you the question and the answer, explaining why that's the answer. Um, and it's gonna highlight strengths and weaknesses. You can see, you know, you don't know. And as I said, those, those link to the videos, which we'll see in a sec. Our technology. So what's really cool is that we actually have an app, which um, most people don't have. So you can, you can revise on the go. You can actually download our videos offline. So if, you, if you've got a long tube journey or a long bus journey, you can download those videos before you leave um, your, your, your house. Um, and they're available for offline use. So you can download our app on iOS and Android. And we obviously have a website, which, which all, it all matches up. So any, any progress you do on the app will match the website and vice versa. Uh, we have very, very smart, what we call adaptive technology. So that the, 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 the content and your learning journey adapts to you depending on your own, your own level, which we'll see in a sec. Um, which is which is powered by diagnostic testing, which I'll show you in a sec. This is not live right now. It's going to be there in the next two weeks when we push the when we push the uh, the quizzes out. Um, we have get grade setting and something called gamification. So this is there to motivate you. So when you sign up, which I'll show you in a sec, you set your grade like an A and A star, and based on that, we allocate you a, diff a number of points you've got to hit each week, which you earn by watching videos and doing quiz questions, which I'll demonstrate in a sec. And then we have what we call an intuitive tracking color tracking system. So anytime you watch a video or do a quiz. It will go orange in progress. When you complete it, it will be green. Everything's very clear where you're up to and what you've done. Um, so let's take a look. I'm just going to try get this set up for you guys. Which give me one sec. So is that sharing right? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, guys, got a technical difficulty for one sec. Okay, I'm now going to show you just the resource real quick, and I want to show you the diagnostic testing, which is coming soon. So here's our website. So let's go and sign up. So we're going to pick where a student. We're going to hit our name. So my name is Daniel Brand. I'm just going to put an email address in there. And I'm going to put my year. Okay, hit sign up. So I'm going to go select my subject. Let's say I'm doing AQA biology. Let's go. So as you can see, it's asking me for my grade here, right? So this is going to be really important for setting points later on. So let's go hit A star. So we want an A star and just a bit about what motivates me. Why did I sign up? Okay, I'm worried I'm going to fail. So let's go on. So here is the course page now. So what you can see is the name of the course. Here are notes and summary sheets are. So if I click on notes, it might take a bit of time to load. But here are those really nice detailed notes we saw in the presentation. Uh, the reason you can't see, because I just signed up, but yeah, you can see that when you obviously have the full access to the course, you'll have the, the full revision, revision notes. Okay, so it's taking a bit of time to load on my end, but yeah, they're there. Uh, summary sheets there as well. This is the course progress. So you're going to see how we're going to fill this up in a sec. This is our weekly progress. So because I selected I want an A star, I've got to hit 20 points a week. And you'll see how now we're going to get points. Here the course is. So my year 12, year 13 practicals and mock paper course. Uh, let's jump into monomers and polymers. 
So this is the first unit. So you can see here we have three videos. We have introduction to biological molecules, which we're watching right now. And then we also have making and breaking polymers. And then we have an exam style question. And on each video in the top right, you can see a view spec point. So we're gonna click on that and it shows you exactly what this video is covering. So it's all very, very clear and concise and you know exactly what's going on. Now, as we start watching the video, you'll see there's these things below the videos, which, which, we, call, which we call tags. And, and they start filling up as you start watching. So you can see it's starting to go orange. When you finish watching this tag, it will go green and will be completed and you'll get one point for that. Right, And then if you finish watching this, this particular video, it will also go green. The reason it's orange now is because it's in progress. I'm busy watching it. So if I jump back to the main course page now, you'll see that things will be going orange. This is now orange. This concept, monomers and polymers, is now orange because I've started watching it. And up here, the topic, monomers and polymers, is orange. So you can see a quick um, synop like, like a summary up here of where you're up to. And um, you can see yeah, your exact progress and exactly where you are at any point. So it's all very, very, it's all very, very smartly built in terms of the tracking. Um, that's pretty much sort of the product. What I want to show you now is just demo the, the diagnostic testing I was talking about before, which is going to be going live very, very soon in about two weeks. We're just putting the final touches on it now. And this is where the smart technology comes in. And anyone who buys the package, will, this is complete, included completely for free. So there's no extra cost to this. It's included as part of your, your package. Um, I'm just going to sign into my account. Just bear with me one sec. Okay, so let's jump to the year 12 AQA course. So you'll see now there was only three videos in there. Now you'll see there's four because we have a quiz in there now and I'll show you this in a sec. So when we go and do the quiz, you, you can do this quiz before or after. The reason it's not asking me to do it before because I've already done it, but what would actually happen is would prompt you to do the quiz before. So let's go through the quiz and we'll see what happens. So I'm just going to pick random answers, happen to get that right. So you can see the quiz in action here. Each time I'm putting an answer in, I'm getting what is the correct answer and the explanation there. So let's go. Okay. Not doing too well here, guys. My, my subject is not biology. I'm, I'm from an engineering background. So uh, forgive me, please. <laughs> so let's keep going. And the good news is, is that we have a whole bank of questions. So if you want to go take this quiz again, you'll get some new questions. So it's not just the same questions over and over again, but this is the cool part. So now it shows you what you know and what you don't know. So that's really helpful just for your own feedback as, as a consolidation tool. But the really cool thing here is that we've built a platform where these were linked tags and quiz, quiz answers and videos through tags. So for example, monomers and polymers, I obviously don't know so well. So if I just click that, it's going to take me to that exact point in the video where we cover monomers and polymers. There we go. It starts me off right there. All right. So not only are we, we, the tool is very smart in that we are getting you, we're getting you to we're quizzing you and what you know and what you don't know. And then we don't just leave it at that. We, we show you how to improve it. So if you didn't know monomers polymers, we jump you back to that part in the video so you can go learn it and then go do the quiz again. And hopefully you'll get it right. As you can see as well, the tags have changed colors here. This has gone all orange because I got that wrong. This was also orange. I've started watching it now. So it's cleared it, but the colors as well, also show you what you know and what you don't know. So let's go see one I hopefully got right. So here you go, biochemical basis of lights. The reason that's green is because I got that right in the quiz. So it shows me, okay, maybe I don't need to watch this. I can just skip over it, I've done well. Let me just jump to the part I don't know, biological molecules. And there we go, it starts me off there. So not only are we just dishing up content to you, we're building a proper system where we're accelerating your learning. We're accelerating your learning because we're getting you to do quizzes, which then can place you in the video. And we've got something called placement quizzes. Um, so yeah, I think that's a really great feature we have. And also, as, as you can see, we've also got this gamification, which is you're getting points for, for doing things on our, on our platform, uh, which is hopefully uh, mo motivating you. So yeah, this will be out in about two weeks. It's not there now, but it completely will be included. No extra cost to, uh, to what we already have. Um, I'm just going to jump back to just give you back to Francesca now. Um, he's going to talk you through the rest with two minutes off, and then we're going to announce the winners, and we can let you get back to your Sunday. Thanks, Dan. So hopefully um, you guys have a much better understanding of 
what we actually do here at Snap Revise, how we're trying to help you. And um, don't just take our word for it as well. There are so many, so many happy students. We're absolutely thrilled to have received the reviews that we have. You can go check them out yourself at, uh, I think, on Facebook, Google, Instagram. Um, what, what other platforms are there? <laughs> Facebook. Yeah, Facebook is Twitter. Facebook. Yeah, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter as well. People have reached out via Twitter, um, so go and have a, a look at that. And um, you know, I think we really set the standard um, with our products and with the quizzes and and how we sort of look after you guys as well. Because each one of you is individual. We all like totally get that everyone. Um, yeah, everyone is different. Everybody learns in different ways, and so we try to build this platform that will adapt to each single one of you. So your um, your experience of SNAP Revise is not going to be the same as your friend's experience of SNAP Revise um, in terms of the pathways that we take you down and what you end up watching and what you end up not watching and, you know, the quizzes that you start taking. But the consensus amongst the people that have used it so far is that it is great. Um, it's so much cheaper than traditional tutoring. So I, I really recommend um, you at least, um, yeah, come check us out um so yeah look, plenty of reviews um so yeah this is uh, as as dan mentioned what's going to be included so hundreds and hundreds of teaching videos we don't just have like 50 per course we have literally hundreds we really make sure that we hit every single specification point um we also have hundreds of exam question videos so we're taking you through um how you should be practically applying all of the information that you've learned during revision um we have a detailed revision guide we have summary sheets and notes as well so that you don't have to spend time writing out your notes yourself you've got them there all you need to do is learn them um obviously but we're not saying you shouldn't write your own notes as well you can do that additionally but you will have this support um quiz questions coming soon in about i'd say about two weeks um so hang tight there um grade setting and xp points all their smart color tracking adaptive technology to each and every one of you because you're all different and um also ios apps and and android apps so you can have this with you on the go you can download videos for offline use so if you're on the tube and you've got no data um, you can still, you know, revise. So here's what you've been waiting for. Um, so here's the discount code, web class 50 expires at midnight tonight. Um, and it can be used on any one of the following. So it basically halves your price. Um, and yeah, so biology and uh, yeah, for year 12 and year 13 practicals and the mock paper, um, it's just a one-off payment as well and uh, you will have full access for the full two years that you're taking your exams. Um, just, just, just one of them, just like one of like, them. Ah, yeah, so um, just to be totally, totally clear, you can only use this discount code once. So um, say if you want to buy biology year 12 and 13, you will only get one of them at this discounted price, unfortunately. Um, but we are about to announce some winners. Okay, so here we go. So, um, Sajil Malik, we will be getting in touch with you very shortly. Um, Keely Skelly as well and Heather Twins. Well done, guys. Um, so, so hello at snapprovise.co.uk. Yeah, well done, guys. Congratulations. Um, if you could just drop uh, the email address, hello at snapprovise.co.uk. Um, I think Danny's about to put it in the chat. If you just drop that a line, um, give your name, uh, your email address, uh, and say it's for Dan, um, he'll sort you right out. Well done guys, and thank you so much once again for coming along, giving up an hour on your Sunday. Um, it's been a pleasure and hopefully see some of you next week at the biology seminar.